This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're dealing with anxiety, sadness, or anger, you're not alone. But there's a therapy service that can help. If you've been waiting for a sign to prioritize your mental health in 2022 and beyond, this is it. BetterHelp is an online therapeutic resource that offers licensed professional therapists. You don't have to leave your house and sit in a waiting room to get the help you need. Just go to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins, answer a few questions about how you're feeling, and they'll match you to the therapist who's right for you. Click the link in the description to get started. Five seconds of logos! Comcast! It took nine movies for us to finally get a flashback to Papa Toretto's racing days? This is some formative sh**. This should have opened the second movie. Maybe even the first, but not the ninth! This is the biggest problem with these f***ing movies. You just make up new sh** and say, This new sh** is now super important, like the sudden Toretto brother who shows up later in this movie. By Fast 10 it'll be revealed that Little Dom and Little Brian went to preschool together and used to race big wheels for nickels during recess. And also they'll be related by blood, which Dom finds out when his long-lost real dad shows up. And also Dom will have three arms now, but it'll never be explained or acknowledged, and he just uses the third arm to constantly hold a corona. Jack! You realize you got this in the bag, right? When last we saw Rowdy Burns, he had short hair and was clean shaven. But in the next shot, he's got long hair and a beard, and his last name is Hubbard. Holy sh! This is a tiny track. I've raced my Hot Wheels on longer tracks than this. Is the winner's trophy a thimble? He's gonna come at you for that. No sh! You've been talking about this number 23 car and what a dick he is for the last three minutes. What else is he gonna do? We come in peace! Roman knows that Dom would react this way to a strange car driving towards his home, right? Why doesn't this family have a way of communicating with each other if they want to come visit? I mean, at least do the thing in All the President's Men and stick a flag in a flower pot or something. Jesus. We would have called first. <laughs> Except you actually need phones in order to get phone calls. Hey, we wanted to ratchet up the tension for absolutely no reason, other than to show that Dom and Letty are serious about protecting their home right down to a Rogue One hidey hole for their kid. Did anybody else get this? I sent it only to us. How the f do you know that? Is there something about the transmission that allows you to know he only sent it to one place? Dom, this is Cypher, the woman who killed the mother of your child. I'm glad you reminded me, Roman, because I honestly didn't remember. I bet Dom doesn't even remember. Brian and Mia got out of the game when they became parents. We're not them. But we did get a house out in the middle of nowhere and armed ourselves to the teeth just so we could protect this family. Going on this dangerous mission where I could die totally jives with that. First off, this is the bullshittiest zoom and enhance that is ever bullshit. Second off, you mean to tell me that the hacker crew Tej and Ramsey didn't try to do this? Also, what would have happened if they had found the cross? Could we have been spared this bullshit that Dom wasn't gonna go on this mission? I'll take point. Careful. Careful's when you get hurt. Philosophy of half the drivers in Nashville makes it into this movie. Yeah, well, their mistake was trying to cut into it. But just give me a minute, I can get in. It kills me that a team that can hijack a plane and break out one of the most dangerous criminals in the world didn't have someone like Ramsey who could crack into this thing. They get shot at and these fools scramble. They've done insane heists and prevented even crazier ones, but they came here with no plan? No exit strategy? No if we're being watched? The aim is so non-existent that I'm actually wondering if this is the worst aim I've ever seen in any movie ever. Like, in UHF, in the Rambo parody scene, when the guy is six feet away from Weird Al Yankovic and can't hit him, still not as bad as this, right? What? You don't know who I am? You think I'm scared? No, I just think you're trying to earn your paycheck. Man, Obi-Wan Kenobi is gonna have a fucking sh** fit when he sees Roman kicking all this ass and he doesn't even have the high ground. God damn it! this movie. I'm already done. The military misses every target in this scene with every bullet and later every helicopter rocket. I know these assholes aren't gonna die, but the least you could do is give a better reason than nobody can hit sh** ever. We're only 16 minutes in and I've already forgotten where we are and why we are even here. Peligro Minas! What does that mean? The movie will now force Roman to ask this question three times before anyone f***ing answers him. Also, even though Dom and Roman have been talking with radios this whole time, Ramsey and Tej somehow have earpieces to talk to everybody. Why doesn't everyone have an earpiece? And how does her earpiece tap into the radios they're using? These assholes are literally going to navigate a minefield and survive, while the people with the best idea of where the mines are located are going to die like chumps. My ass is in fuego! Is he trying to unearn his paycheck? There's never been a less tense scene than Roman getting out of this vehicle before it falls on a landmine. I actually called my aunt during this moment, and honestly, talking to my aunt is my least favorite thing, next to scratching my balls with a steak knife. How in the hell are you not dead? I was gonna ask the same question, and I was about to write a really well-worded sin about it. It was a doozy, but I slow-moed the scene, and it appears that Roman was behind the tank when it landed. This might be the first time we've ever given a sin to a movie because they didn't actually do anything wrong, and yet the movie thinks it did. This is for self-policing your own sins, you f***ing dickhead movie. Now where the f*** is this thing coming from? Isn't it all jungle to their left? How did this thing gather enough speed to catch up to them on uneven ground through what looks like mostly jungle? 
This is seriously the speeder bike sequence from Return of the Jedi. Also, why doesn't this vehicle just ram Letty's bike into a tree or something? How did this out of nowhere buggy time the jump to do this when Letty only decided to make this jump a split second ago? Yeah, you're right, Dom. Having Letty land on your car is way better than the ground. Good thinking. She would have died if she hit the ground. Also, this series is notoriously mum when it comes to where everybody is in relation to everybody else. So I'm having trouble figuring out how Dom is even in the position to catch Letty with the hood of his car. Dom was on Letty's left when she slung that dude into the tree. And then she made this jump, complete with the collision immediately after that. But Dom is somehow in the perfect position from below to see all this and make his heroic move in mere seconds from what appears to be Letty's right when all the shit goes down. That was Jacob back there, wasn't it? Who, Jacob? My long-lost brother that no one has ever heard of except for you, and somehow you've also seen him in person? That Jacob? Why would he show up out of the blue after eight movies of doing nothing? That's just absurd. Are we supposed to drive across that? Well, I said it looks like a bridge! There's pretty much no reason to risk crossing that bridge, right? We don't even know what the stakes are. They don't even know what the stakes are! All we know is that Furiosa killed Groot's baby mama, and that's the only reason they're out here. It's definitely not because they have any allegiance to Snake Plissken. Oh, f*** you, man. Why do you make me do this? Why do you make me say, is this the single biggest f*** you the physics ever put to film? This is not not remotely how gravity and friction work, you dicks. Eat my ass to the 10th power. Also, why do people like this? Can't quite explain why Letty's grunt here irks me so much, except for the fact that it's the only consequence of getting hit by a f***ing missile. Okay, so I'll drive off the mountain, but that's totally cool because we can send in a jet to catch the car as it's falling down. You'll have to make sure you catch me and miss the mountain on the other side, but don't worry about it. We did this on Microsoft Flight Simulator a hundred thousand times. Where's the bridge? Dom's about to do something insane, but it's less insane when you think about the alternative. Could have turned around and let the helicopters firing missiles miss him a hundred more times. <laughs> Hang on here. Just give me a minute. Okay, I think I'm ready to address what just- These assholes crash into a mountain and nothing happens. Again, when you ask us why we don't think any of this is exciting, it's because there is literally zero danger in anything they do. Dom contacted the guy from Fast and Furious 6 to help him out, but I just want to know how they got off that mountain they crash landed on. Jacob is or was Dom's brother. Dun dun dun! Except f you. The flashback reveals that Jacob was also at the racetrack when he and Dom's father died. They could have simply introduced a character named Jacob in that opening scene, and they could have still made the surprise reveal that Dom had a brother if it wasn't for the fact that the trailer already spoiled that. Way too many minutes of the TV spin-off, the young Toretto's. This is young Dom, despite the fact that when we meet him in the original film, he is not much older than this. But he looks nothing like this. And this is one of those moments where I'm like, why didn't you write young Dom to be younger, yo? Or at least cast a better look-alike? Or just Grand Moff Tarkin his ass like Rogue One? Do you know who I am? I know who you are. Do you? <sighs> Tell me, do you hate him enough that it keeps you up at night? Look, I love Charlize Theron. You love Charlize Theron. But this Hannah Foe Lecter bit is unconvincing and boring. Mainly it's the dialogue, which sounds like it came from a 1990s Skinamax movie called Head Games of Desire or Psychological Temptation, starring Shannon Worry. I should have just hired you instead of coercing your brother a couple of years back. We forgive you, Cypher. Nobody knew his character existed back then. The rest of the hardware is a bit dated, pre-internet, to make sure you don't go hacking into anything we don't want you to. So she can hack into a government agency with this old technology, but not anything else because... Say you get what you're after. A weapon so dangerous it shouldn't exist for another half century. She's in a glass case of exposition! Khazar Khan. Genghis Khan's little brother. Nobody's heard of him either. What is this stupid insult supposed to accomplish? She's already talked a bunch of shit about how Jacob's not Dom and doesn't compare to him in any way, so how would Genghis Khan's not famous little brother move the needle? This reminds me of that moment in Transformers and the Holy Grail where Marky Mark recited that famous line about any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic and expected a BJ for knowing it. Ninja Turtle pop out on me? I'll tell you right now, I'm out. Let's break down this one-liner for a second. This is the equivalent of saying we are in an underground space. The Ninja Turtles live in an underground space. Ninja Turtles reference, press enter. Y'all ever thought about how many wild missions we've been on? And we somehow always survive? Roman's sin script for this franchise ends with Ludacris saying, Or maybe you're just a dumbass. 
Oh, that hurts, Fast and Furious franchise. To quote the great Brian Adams, cuts like a knife. Gal Gadot's character Giselle says, hi, by the way. This is the movie's method of saying it's just a movie without breaking the fourth wall. Pretty impressive driving out there. What? This is Letty, your gal, your soulmate. You have seen her drive for years. She's good at it, and that is not news to you, you dick. You should have told me. She deserved to know. Jacob's my brother, too. <laughs> My kids and yours are in the safest hands possible with Brian. Um, Dom would know that, right? Since he was going to stay behind with little Brian until he saw Jacob's necklace in the SOS transmission, he would have dropped the kid off on his way to the plane. Anyway, this awkward Brian reference is awkward in so many ways and would take longer than we have to discuss them. That's what we got from Mr. Nobody's plane. If I had a nickel for every time they said Mr. Nobody in this movie, I'd have at least four or five nickels. But the amount of nickels isn't as important as the amount of times they've said Mr. Nobody, which is a lot. Way more than 20 or 25 cents worth. If you take Aries and upload it to a satellite, it'll spread like a virus. Then it'll be a matter of time before someone can control any weapon system, traditional nuclear stuff we haven't even seen yet. That sounds literally impossible. Ares is the god of war, right? Yes, he is. I remember Giselle fighting him during that airplane sequence at the end of Furious 7. Because of how dangerous it was, the Ares prototype was recovered and split into two halves by Mr. Nobody. Why he didn't just blow it up or bury it next to Parallax is anyone's guess. Mr. Nobody's transmission had one name connected to the key. This is huge news about Han, our friend you thought was dead, but we decided not to reveal this information until later. We felt like everyone needed more drama in their lives. I got this the day Han died. On an absolute whim, I grabbed this before I left our house, and it turns out it was super prescient now that Han is alive. What are you gonna do about Jacob? I'm gonna find him. Dialogue! How? An old friend. God damn, this movie's exasperating. El equipo mecánico perdieron la carrera de libremente. Thank God Dom went to prison and while there got to work on cars. And while working on one, another prisoner was able to identify a flaw on Dom's car that had the exact issue his dad's car had when he died. You win. And come back home. You lose. You keep driving. Winning equals forgiveness for murdering our dad. Tell me why you killed dad. Let's race. Or, I don't really need an answer at all. We should just race the pain away. Also, tell me why it's so quiet right now. There are hundreds of people around here and revving cars and boom boxes and shit. Armed robbery in Echo Park. Fourth Street Bridge is open. How does an armed robbery make a bridge open? The worst thing you can do to a Toretto is take away their family. That's what you did to Jacob. Sounds like Jacob did a lot of that on his own, right? And can we stop with this Toretto family bullshit? For most people, taking away their family would be the worst thing. This isn't a Toretto exclusive. Corona, my favorite. You remembered. How about you? How are you doing? I realize people have to eat, but this is not a vacation, ladies. Time is of the essence. The Ares weapon is a real threat. The mystic portal awaits. This is so casual, it's infuriating. Cowboys would make a run for the border to get away from the law. How Tokyo was his... Mexico. I don't even know if they were searching this particular area of Tokyo because it meant something to Han, but what are the f***ing odds they'd see this flag? Also, Han sent a postcard with a picture of Mexico and a Tokyo postmark and expected these assholes to know what the f*** it meant. What's worse, he sent the postcard on the very day he died, which means it's been years since he sent it. So why did Dom even think about this postcard when he saw Jacob's necklace in the Mr. Nobody transmission? If you're telling me the necklace reminded him of the postcard because there's a church on it, then you are the screenwriter of this film. Dominic Toretto sent us. Who's Dominic Toretto? I can see why this guy doesn't know who Dominic Toretto is, but why is Sean confused? They raced each other at the end of Tokyo Drift, and then we saw them talking about Han in Furious 7. Even if Sean isn't confused, it takes the sting out of that joke completely. Nice necklace, Queenie. How the f*** did Dom know Queenie would be here? Does she steal from this place so often that it's a known haunt? This is the dumbest car chase ever. Here's a seasoned driver in a f***ing noble M600 supercar. This thing costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and goes 0 to 60 in 3 f***ing seconds. The Batmobile is jealous of this car. This car chase shouldn't last more than 10 seconds. Oh yeah, yeah, well it did go around on a crew that just turned up. Led by an American. <laughs> Isn't it great that Dom knows so many people around the world who know everything about every single crime that's going down and just happen to be characters from prior movies? Like, this sh went down in France, who does he talk to? So let me get this straight. This is a white party for supercar owners and hot people being held in a three-story Wayne Manor duplicate where most of the beautiful people wearing white are standing out in the rocky, dusty parking lot? Since my dad is head of state, it makes me a foreign dignitary. And this place, an embassy.
which means you just trespassed into my country and attempted murder. I don't know if this is bullshit or not, but this long-winded explanation got tiresome as soon as he said since. Regardless of embassy rules, I feel like this scene plays the exact same way. Que lo que, what's up? These movies really have become the Oceans franchise. A powerful son of a head of state calls Interpol to arrest Dom, and somehow it turns into Dom getting arrested by Cardi B and a bunch of supermodels. They reference Queenie as the reason behind it, and that's all you need to know, because that's how shit works. Your boy Jacob Biometrics are encoded to this gun. You have no trouble tracking him now. Biometrics rear their ugly head again. Was there a huge problem in the criminal underworld where people kept getting shot with their own guns, so they started adding biometrics to them to stop the trend? All biometrics ever do is make it easier for the good guys when the biometrics fail, or in this case, allow others to track you. Han never mentioned a girl. Not ever. Oh my god, that's so suspicious! Here's the big reveal that Han is officially back, and thank god he was able to shoot all the bad guys in this alley. Phew! But I got one question. How did he know that he would be needed outside of the apartment that Letty, Mia, and Ellen were fighting in? How did he know to set up a sniper nest out here when all the action was inside? Also, Han, the guy you thought was dead, but also the guy you totally remember as a master sniper, right? He was a master sniper before, right? Right? I pulled Jacob's biometric signature off the gun, and the algorithm I've run says Jacob's team is right on top of us. Wait, you're getting all that from what amounts to fingerprints? Does the gun have facial recognition software too? You throw around terms like biometrics and algorithm and expect that to be enough of an explanation, but you gotta have more than that to find someone like this. But tracking chips follow the chip. Before we know it, we'd be chasing some expensive yet tacky jacket to the dry cleaners. Sure, sure, but... Stick with me now. What if you had biometrics and a tracking chip, and the chip stayed on the person you were tracking? That would be better, correct? What the hell, Jimmy? Blaming Jimmy. Say we had a big electromagnet turned up right around here. Wouldn't that disrupt all electronic signals? Including security systems. That's it. But it doesn't disrupt your discussion over these radios for some reason. That's cool. These dudes must have been oblivious to the fighting outside a minute ago, including all this slamming into the side of this truck. I got eyes on Jacob. He then says nothing else and gets in his car to chase a ziplining Jacob himself. I was going to point out how convenient it is that it runs parallel to roads Dom can take to keep an eye on it, but in a moment we see that Jacob has some kind of absurd zipline gun, and he keeps shooting new ziplines. So then, why does he keep shooting in one direction? Surely he knows someone is going to chase him, right? Why not turn? Or set it up for turning during the planning stage? This is like the Prometheus school of zipline gunning away from things. Also, this is yet another plan from Jacob that I don't understand. After stealing the Ares, his escape route is... multiple ziplines across rooftops? Like, I understand getting out of the immediate area, but why isn't he in a car, or a car that can get caught by a jet by now. It's not that this sequence of Game of Thrones here not knowing how to drive a car is bad. It's great. It's just that it owes so much to sneakers it feels derivative. <laughs> I'd like to know how Dom caught up to Jacob, since Jacob is ziplining and Dom is on foot. Sure, Jacob had to stop to get another zipline gun, but that's just not enough time for someone to close the gap on a zipliner. Then you have to time it so that you make this crazy f***ing jump off a rooftop. I would have removed all the sins if Dom missed Jacob and fell to his death here. <laughs> Man, this building has some shoddy drywall work, yo. Wait a minute, that sounds like a tour bus coming to a stop right outside this window. Shrug! I will jump out and expect it to be there. No whammies, no whammies, stop! Dom sees the yellow truck and is able to calculate the speed and the distance it will travel in the time it takes him to jump onto a van going the other way, catch up with Jacob, and tackle him to the roof of the truck as it drives under this bridge. Bad guy takes off in a sports sedan, good guys are in a huge delivery van. Let's see how long this chase lasts, shall we? Okay, the fact that this vehicle has a massive magnet wall is stupid, and I can't argue with that, but... This moment here where she uses that to her advantage and literally pulls the bad guy car to her vehicle with magnets through a building is f***ing awesome. In this rare case, the awesome beats the stupid. But also, Ramsey potentially kills several shoppers and store owners so that she can electromagnet this car to the side of the truck. Okay, listen up! I want 50 of the best men! Why 50? Why not everyone? Did they forget to put the extra security around Cypher? Earlier, you had to turn off a laser grid to walk to her cell. But I guess she played some head games with Otto's weaker personnel and got them to lift the laser field. Probably called him fat or something. Me, I'm Luke freaking Skywalker. Are you sure about that? Cypher plays head games with Otto about what Star Wars character he is. It's as exciting as it is. <sighs> Apparently, Dom and the crew drove that yellow truck with a car-shaped hole on the left side of it all the way to this facility, and not a single cop pulled him over on the way. If you have time to lean, you have time to clean. And yeah, that doesn't apply directly here, but my point is, these three are goofing off like there's no mission. But can you get to the part where the car exploded and you're still alive? Roman is correct. And yet the movie will allow Han to go through an entire movie's worth of backstory just to get to the part where he's somehow still alive. The bloat on this movie is strong. In fact, you left out the most important part. I was 11. Holy <laughs> 
Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. This is a prayer meeting without the religion. Holy sh**. At first, I didn't see it. And by at first, I didn't see it, I mean, I saw it immediately. Turns out I wasn't the only one looking for this thing. But on the same night, though? He taught me how to survive. Life or death survive? Or, like, disco survive? We became a family. Oh, f*** you and your family and all these movies' family bullshit that they hide behind for lazy exposition and lazy emotional moments. My parents didn't want Project Ares to fall into the wrong hands. So they locked it with their own DNA. Something we share. Please tell me how something like Project Ares can be used for good. This movie is essentially sneakers, but with measurably more rat semen. This object can hack into anything it wants. Unless you're planning on stealing from corrupt politicians to donate to Amnesty International, Greenpeace, and the United Fund. What's this orb's purpose other than bad sh**? So when Decker Chaw came calling, we used it as cover. This is some extraordinary bullshit. The movie pretty much figures that you don't remember Tokyo Drift, and they're probably right, but still. In Tokyo Drift, Han was being chased by a guy named DK because Han was stealing from him and his father. There's no way to coordinate DK finding out about that, confronting Han, initiating a car chase, and Han driving through Tokyo to fake his death. None. Also, this is being told as some great love story, how Giselle talked Han into living with her in Tokyo, and when she died, he was super broken up about it, I'm sure, but in Tokyo Drift, it seems like he got over her death pretty quickly. My death became the best way to stay alive. So why did you pick some busy-ass place in Tokyo to hide out? Why not go into the country? Is it because you already sent the postcard with the Tokyo postmark and the Mexico clue that Dom didn't even bother to think about until a later movie told him to do it? Man, did they choose a super obvious hideout or did Batista just get lucky? You know, the only good thing to come from Dad dying, if he hadn't, I'd have spent my entire life in your shadow. This movie has done nothing to build up that tension about Jacob living in Dom's shadow other than people mentioning it. Dad died because he was trying to throw that race. We were in deep debt. So, at the beginning of the movie, Michael Rooker said, You realize you got this in the bag, right? Season's wrapped up, man. Doesn't matter where you place. Implying that Jack Toretto was kicking all sorts of ass in whatever racing series this is. So, how are they in debt? Gambling? Furthermore, Jack didn't do a very good job of throwing this race if he already had it in the bag and was asking Dom for advice about any obstacles he could see on the track. It's almost like they're already retconning what happened in that race in this very movie. We do all of it. I kept that promise. John Cena is pretty good at comedy. Tej has been standing next to this electromagnet the whole time. Could have turned this on while Jacob gave all that backstory and they could have taken all these people out. But no, they wait until now, after Jacob's taken Ares and the DNA girl. Dom sacrifices himself here when there appears to be plenty of time for him to go through and close the door from the other side. This is an unnecessary sacrifice. The character gets so overwhelmed by baddies that there's no way they can come back and they will definitely come back from this. Okay, so I know Dom punched a couple guys, but where are the other 500 people who can stop him from grabbing these chains right now? They just let him do this for no reason. <laughs> This is possible. Incredible, but I think Dom is still dreaming, and he's been using Mal's totem this whole time, so he'll never be able to figure out if he's in someone else's dream. So, this is a happy ending, but only in the sense that Dom doesn't know what's real anymore, and this is the best he can get. Just want to remind everyone that Dom is figuring all this stuff out while he's drowning. Given that we've already been over the death of Papa Toretto a few times, both in dreams and flashbacks, it's kind of pushing it to have this entire scene here that merely visually confirms the thing we've heard several times. Fantastic! Letty's coming to save Dom! But how does she drag him out to safety? He fell down a deep shaft. Even if there are ladders, how does she climb back up with him? Does she tie him to her waist? Is this who we are? Given it's been nine movies, yeah, this is f***ing who you are, you stupid idiot. Why does L's DNA jumpstart Ares but doesn't power down when someone else touches it? Four minutes to launch. You fellas good to go? So Lucas Black is now flying this plane, and that's acceptable to everyone because... why? It's hilarious to me that Tej and Roman came to visit these fools nearly an hour ago in movie time, told them that Dom needed their help, and then vanished until the movie manufactured a reason for them to need a rocket. Also, they didn't get permission to fly this jet over Georgian airspace, right? How does this jet not get shot down? This worked. Car in space! We have a car in space! Dom assumes that he won't kill innocent bystanders with this move. This is fun, but releasing the magnetic pulse would not shoot the trucks away from the hero's vehicle. It would just release them. There's no force on the other side of them pulling against them. This scene watched the Bourne fight scenes and declared, We shall make it even shakier! Taking a break from this action to say that the cops around this place don't seem to give a shit about all this destruction and reckless driving going on in the streets. Damn, you are just a not all of us. Han wastes time saying this line instead of opening the back hatch immediately. I mean, taking this car into space and surviving is crazy enough. But I just keep thinking, Sean and his crew modified this car to go into space in mere hours. I feel like this scene deserves over a trillion sins for being so dumb that I almost respect it. 
I have a new business partner. Maybe you know her. Surely Otto could have double-crossed Jacob well before this moment, instead of relying on one of his muscle guys to beat him up on top of the beast while the operation was going on. What did he need Jacob for once he partnered with Cypher? He could have left his ass back in the prison he sprung him from. <laughs> Billboard. The movie perpetuates the myth that cars are mattresses. Dom bumps the wrecked car to save Jacob, and then Mia climbs out to grab Jacob, further saving his life. And I know he's your brother, and I know someone on his team has usurped him and taken over the evil mission, but that does not make Jacob a good guy now! Let his ass bounce and flesh scrape off as he hit the pavement. He was trying to take over the world! God damn! It's amazing how these people use technology for the first time and everything works perfectly on the first try every time. So many unseen innocent people have died in this movie that they're making another Batman v Superman to apologize for it. Awesome, guys. You showed up right on time. The download's almost done. I totally forgot there was a time-sensitive download happening. Is it HD porn? I sure hope it's not a car. You wouldn't download a car, would you? What the hell is that guy looking at? Dom, I can't get to you! But I can. The f This dude wanted the end of the world three minutes ago! Then his underling kicked him out of the evil club, and now he's a good guy? This is like Kim Jong-un's sister overthrowing him, and then him deciding, well, I guess I love democracy now. America, here I come. Also, John Cena, despite being pure evil this movie, is going to be one of the good guys next movie. But this is par for the Fast and Furious course. The Rock was an antagonist before he was a protagonist. Jason Statham, sh Even Dom was the antagonist in the first movie, and then became the leader. That's what this series does. Repeat. Rinse, repeat, 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 Also, also, how the f is this guy in the right place at the right time? Ever since Mia let him go, he's been sad driving in another direction, probably thinking about highlights from the first three Rocky movies during the driving sequence. Guys, what's happening up there? Do they really have radios that have this kind of range? Oh man, there goes HBO. Dom throws an explosive, gets down into the beast, the explosive somehow flips the f***ing thing over, and why didn't he just jump off? Does he need this vehicle anymore? They blew up the satellite and they had the Ares. What is this stunt even for? Meanwhile, Dom's in a vehicle that is flipping over and over rapidly, but he can maintain his balance as he runs to the driver's seat. Yes! Why don't you just have them fight a predator in a car with lightsaber headlights and be done with it? is Dom even steering? The f***ing front of this vehicle is on its side! You're an asshole for even suggesting Dom can control this anymore. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do this anymore. Okay, I think the sin counter just went full self-destruct. And the timer is borked. I think we still have to rattle off a few more sins, though. I haven't been this disappointed in a movie starring Vin Diesel that featured failed remote drone warfare since Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It was a simulator, and she wasn't in the plane. Dun dun dun! But this is an open ass fing hangar. This is the least secure place an escaped criminal could have done this shit from. This is the hangar from Paris Hilton's infamous Hardy's commercial. Wash you once. Don't let that happen again, okay? And these guys really do value family above all else. This guy literally set the entire movie in motion by trying to end the goddamn world, then, a biscuit later, hugs, and here's the keys to my car, and I love you, bro. F this movie. This movie. Comcast doubles down on their awfulness by mentioning minions in a Fast and Furious movie. What's next? A barbed wire reference? This is where my daddy died in a horror fire wreck. I wanted to share that with you, little gupper. Now let's go get an ice cream. Everything I needed to know about life I learned on this track. You did? I did. He did. Oh Christ, we're doing another flashback. I couldn't believe it when I heard you were alive. It's a long story. When I tell it to you, you'll be in a unique position to point out all the plot holes. It's still an empty chair. What is Brian so late for? His wife is here. Was she like, I'll take a separate car to the barbecue while you dick around at home and wait to make a dramatic entrance? Twelve and a half minutes of credits! <laughs> Holy sh! Han's alive! Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. We're coming up on the second full year of a time that's been difficult for so many people. If you're having a tough time this holiday season, there's an online therapy service that we use and love that can help. BetterHelp is convenient, user-friendly, and a great way to get therapy from the comfort of your own home. Right from the jump, they'll assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. So, if you're looking for some professional therapy that could help you on your journey to health and happiness, go to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins for a unique offer today.